at lesson 110 today, and then we're also going to skip to lesson 112. And then we'll, yeah, and then we'll come back and do lesson 111 tomorrow. So lesson 112 is Correct. We're going to do lesson 110 and 112. Your homework will only be lesson 110. That's scary because I did all of 110 except like three questions. No, you will only do lesson 110. And then we'll do lesson 111. And so you'll have lesson 111 homework. And then Friday we'll do lesson 113. And so you will have lesson 113 homework. So you won't ever actually do problem set 112. So we're looking at quadratic inequalities for greater than. And then lesson 112 is quadratic inequalities that are less than. I did them last year as two separate lessons, and it really helps if you do them together. So. Mm-hmm. You've done those before. Well, they're like equations like equal so if you have like less than or equal to or greater than or equal to same concept yeah so if you want to say that x is a positive number you can say x is a positive number or x is greater than zero right you knew that positive numbers are all numbers greater than zero if you have two numbers that are positive and you multiply them together what would you get a positive number, right? Mm -hmm. So positive times a positive is still greater than zero, right? What if you have two negative numbers? What is a negative times a negative? So negative times negative is still greater than zero, right? Y'all with me so far? Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to use that in just a minute. I'm sure that you understand a positive times a positive is still a positive and a negative times a negative is a positive. But we're going to actually use that information in our inequalities in just a second. Um, what happened to the shade? I don't want to look at that right now. I just want to look at that. What is different about this inequality? X plus 2 times X minus 3, right? Does that make sense? Normally, we just have X plus 2 is greater than 0, or X minus 3 is greater than 0, right? We don't normally have two things being multiplied together. So, since they both have to be, or since, like, when you multiply them together, they have to be greater than zero, they either can be both positive or they can be both what? Negative. One or the other. Either both positive or both negative. Do what? Right. Well, no, no, no. Because the x is what we're looking at, not the plus 2 and the minus 3. But do you get that they either both have to be positive or they both have to be negative? So that when you multiply them together, they're still greater than zero? Okay.
So we're going to do one for positive positive and one for negative negative. It's either one or the other. We're not sure which yet. Okay, so if this has to be positive, x plus 2 has to be greater than 0, right? And what do we know about x minus 3? It also has to be greater than 0. x plus 2 is greater than 0, or x minus 3 is greater than 0. Do you see how that works? But if it has to be negative, x plus 2, if it's supposed to be negative, has to be less than 0. And x minus 3 has to be less than 0. Does that make sense? Because if it has to be negative, it's got to be a number smaller than 0. So these two are, if they are positive, and then these two would be negative numbers. Mm -hmm. we got to figure out what our numbers could possibly be for x. It's going to give you this. And then you got to make these four from that. You have two from the positives and two from the negative. Do you know how to solve these four inequalities? What would this one be? This one? Okay, so those are the four that you get. If you look at these two, which one are we going to use? Which one? The negative 2 or the 3? Yeah, it makes a difference. Which one would we use? Why the 3? Is negative 2 necessarily greater than 3? Is 3 greater than negative 2, though? Yes. This is the one that has a bigger restriction. Does that make sense? Because some of the numbers that are greater than negative 2 don't fit this inequality. Like negative 1, is it greater than negative 2? Yeah. But is it greater than 3? So this is the more restrictive one. So we want to use x is greater than 3. Looking over here, which one is more restrictive? The negative 2? Because it's, it's, it's what numbers are smaller than negative 2? All of them. But are all of the numbers smaller than negative 3 also smaller than negative 2? No. So we want to use this inequality. Those are the two we want to use. And now you graph them. You know how to graph them, right? Are we using open circles or closed circles? Okay. Yeah, if you plug in a 3, 3 plus 2 is positive. 3 minus 3 is still positive. Well, you can't plug in 3 because it has to be greater than 3. Yeah, but 0 positive or negative, either one. But if you plug in negative 2 or numbers like negative 1 or 0 or 1, these aren't going to be two positive numbers. We don't care about this number. We care about that number and that number. Whenever you plug them in, they have to be a positive or they both have to be negative. We are not. You can't plug in negative 2. It has to be less than negative 2. You can only plug in numbers that are less than negative 2. Is negative 1 less than negative 2? What numbers are less than negative 2? Negative 3. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 3 minus 3. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? So we found the numbers that will make it either both positives or both negatives. You with me? Okay. So greater than 3 goes where? 
okay? Less than negative 2 goes where? You see how that works? Any of those numbers will satisfy. These numbers here do not work. Like if you try and plug them in, it will not work for your inequality. Does that make sense? Yeah, negative 2 and 3 will not work. That's why we have open circles on them. Does that make sense? Because when you plug in negative 2 and 3, you get 0 and 0, which that's not true. Y'all with me? Okay, let's look at another one. Do we have to factor this one? Is it already factored? But you know how to factor, right? Hopefully by now, you've done like 110 factors every day, plus the ones you've done on your homework. So, when we factor, we first have to do what? Put everything on one side. So, what are we going to move over? So, it'll be x squared minus 2x. Greater than or less than? There you go. All right, so how will that factor? What will it be? Do you agree so far? Okay, so what are our two options? either going to be greater than zero or what? Or they'll both have to be less than. Do what? Uh, yeah, I guess so. It is an equal two on this one. Yeah. So if you simplify all of them, what would you get? 3, negative 1, 3, negative 1, right? So we look at these two. Which one are we going to use? And over here? Alright. So what is it going to look like when you graph it? That's part of it. What about the rest of it? You agree? Do you notice that we get a 3 and a negative 1 and a 3 and a negative 1? And then we use one of the threes and one of the negative ones. That'll work every time. You just gotta figure out which one you're gonna use. Go with me so far? Okay, so that's if they are, what was that? Greater than, you know, positives. This is now looking at less than. You can do them on the same page of your notes for lesson 110, if, unless you just want to do them on a separate page. You can. You don't have to. You can just keep going. So, now we're looking at less than zero. What is less than zero? Negative numbers, right? Okay. 
So, what kind of numbers do you have to multiply together to get negative numbers? Positive and negative. A positive and a negative, or a negative and a positive, right? Those are our two options. Either the first one is positive, and the second one is negative, or the first one is negative, and the second one is positive. Does that make sense? Okay. If you want to do negative positive and then positive negative, it doesn't matter. You just want to have a positive negative and then a negative positive. So in this one, I'm going to let my x plus 2 be positive. So if it's positive, what does that mean? Greater than 0. x minus 3. It's negative. So less than zero. Go with me. Y'all see how that works so far? Okay, now I'm going to do a negative one. Well, which one do I have to let be negative on this one? The two. The x plus two. If it's negative, what does that mean? Less than zero. And if it is positive, what does that mean? Greater than zero. You see how that works? This one takes just a tiny bit more effort to set up your four inequalities. Not much effort, just a little bit more. You have to pay attention. Be very careful on these. So you got one that's positive, one that's negative, and then come over here. One that's negative and one that's positive. Now what do we do? Wait, what is Why well, positive means it's greater than zero. And negative means that it's less than zero. What? We're going to get there. We'll get there. Okay, so for this one, x is greater than negative 2, or x is less than 3. Okay, x is less than negative 2. On this one, x is greater than 3. Do you agree so far? Okay, now what? Which ones are we going to use? Okay, look in on the left. Numbers that are greater than negative 2 and less than 3. Does that work? What does that look like? They're connecting? Okay. What about numbers that are greater than negative 2 and less than 3? Oh, wait. They were going to be going this way? Yeah. And one of them's going to Okay, this one. Right? That's what your picture looks like? So which one do we use? I want to use the left one. Let's pick a number in between negative 2 and 3. 1. 1 plus 2. 1 minus 3. Does that work? Okay, let's pick a number that works on this one. 4 is greater than 3, right? 4 plus 2. 4 minus 3. So that one doesn't work. So we want to use this one. So the negative 2 and the 3. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's the difference. Yep. Make sense? So, whenever it is negative numbers, do you use one from each side? You use one from one side. I mean, use both of them from one side. You don't look at the other side. Does that make sense? It's going to be the one that connects 
not the one that go apart. But if they are greater than zero, what is it supposed to look like? Yeah, they'll go separate. Yeah. The other way you can check these, make sure pick a couple numbers on your that you have shaded in or dotted, and they should work in your inequality. All right, so let's look at another one. What are we gonna have to do, Jamar? <laughs> No, I was just asking you what would we need to do? Oh, well, first you have to go factor it. How would it factor? <laughs> do you agree with him? Yeah. Yes, no, maybe so? Okay, what's the next step? use N and P for negative and positive. So that should be one side, X plus 4 is greater than 0, and X minus 2 is less than 0. And then you'll have x plus 2, I mean x plus 4 is less than 0, and x minus 2 is greater than 0. Do you see where those 4 come from? Yes, no, need to go over it. Wait, Oh, you can have them flip-flop. Yeah. Okay, so from this one, you'll get x is greater than negative 4, x is less than 2, so that should be on one side. It doesn't matter if it's on the left or the right, but those should be together. And then the other set should be x is less than negative 4, x is greater than 2. So we are looking for numbers that are less than, so they got to go together. Like mine is like the, the wrong one that you got. Yeah, you got to do x plus 4 is less than 0, and x minus 2 is greater than. You're doing positive, I mean negative negatives and positive positives. you got to do one positive and one negative. On both? Is that mm -hmm. only greater than No, that's just on less than zeros. Only whenever they have to be negative numbers. You need a positive number and a negative to multiply to and give you a negative. The one, and then on the other one, they both have to be positive or they both have to be negative. Any other questions on these four so far? Okay, so which one is it going to be? This one? We're going from negative 4 to 2. And I'm wanting to shade in, but can I do that? Why not? Okay, so what do I do instead? Alright, why don't I bubble in negative 4? Why don't I bubble in two? Y'all with me? Positive means greater than zero. Negative means less than zero. And then negative less than zero, positive is greater than zero. Because you have to have a positive number and a negative number to make this be a negative number. Does that make sense? Okay. So, if you're making something that is supposed to be greater than zero, what kind of numbers multiply to give you greater than zero? Positive and positive, or negative and negative, right? So, if you have something greater than zero, do you pick one from each side, or do you pick one side? One from each side, okay? If you have less than zero, you're wanting to make a negative number. What do you do to make a negative number? One positive and one negative and then one negative and one positive. And what do you do for that one? Pick one from each side or one side only? You just pick one side only. If they're supposed to be greater than zero, what is your graph going to end up looking like? If it's supposed to be greater than zero, 
It's going to go this way. If it is supposed to be less than zero, they're going to go together. Make sense? Do you see how these work? They're going to take a little bit of work. They're not difficult. When you check these, should they all five work in there? If they don't, does that mean you've done something wrong? So if you want to check and make sure that your answers work, that's fine. Same thing over here. If you check, any number that you pick in this region will work. Make sense? All right. 